A lot of times the marketplace uh, asks you to repeat yourself. To if, you know, if you've done this well, okay, do this other one. And the whole idea for me is to stay clear of that and is to always go into a situation where you don't know how you're going to be, you know, where, where you've not done that before. And that led me to Mississippi Masala, which was a film, um, again, born out of my experience of being a brown person in, between black and white communities in America, you know. And I, and I was sort of uh, accessible to both communities, and yet there were invisible lines between us. And that idea, which was born out of being an undergraduate at Harvard, um, and where I experienced this, led to my reading about the Asian expulsion from Uganda. Idi Amin expelled all the Ugandan Asians uh, who had been there for three generations, based on the color of their skin and a number of other reasons. Um, and, 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 and these, uh, a lot of the Ugandan exiles actually ended up in Mississippi, uh, which was the, uh, to run motels, very cheap motels. Uh, and, and, and that was an interesting trick of history because in Mississippi was the birth of the civil rights movement where the African Americans, you know, uh, protested against their lot in, in American society. And I wondered what if we had uh, the fiction of a Ugandan Asian family who considered themselves African but were from India, had never seen India, who came to a place where African Americans who had never seen Africa, uh, and, and this whole notion of what is home, what is exile, what if we had a Ugandan Asian woman who considered herself African fall in love with an African American who, who you know, was not also allowed to go outside his community. And that's the sort of a cerebral idea born out of actual documentary social realism of the fact that this actually happened. Uh, that gave me the idea to make that story. Uh, and the way in those days that I used to work, just like with Salam Bombay, is you know, me and my writer, Suni, would go on the road for eight weeks in Mississippi, in the South, uh, live in motels, speak to owners, uh, write down you know, stories that were interesting to us, write, think of, look at characters that existed, uh, go to Uganda, go to, interview exiles from Uganda in England and wherever they were. There were two th thousands of them everywhere. Then go back to the land of their dreams, what they had left in Uganda. And, and you know, invent this story like, like a sociologist would do, I suppose, in, in their work. But for us, it was like social, work, social research. But then we would then retreat after all this sort of four months, five months, six months research to write our screenplay, you know? So it was, after Mississippi Masala, it became more, there, there's such a, there's such a, a huge amount of uh, popular Indian writing and fiction in English, you know, the namesake and so many amazing, amazing works coming out of uh, the subcontinent uh, in literature, that that began to be more fodder for my screenplays as opposed to going out on the streets, although I love to do that. You know, I love to do the original screenplay, but the adapting of screenplays, of, of literature, then began to be also very attractive. An important part of my films uh, and my thinking is, you know, when people ask me or when, me, I, when I make something, that it has to make some kind of difference. It has to have a point of view that if I didn't make it, uh, wouldn't, not, I don't want to sound pompous, but if I didn't make it, wouldn't be there, you know? Like, so I take a great responsibility when, I'm, when I say yes to something, uh, that, that I'll bring something to it that otherwise people will not look at it that way, you know? Um, a big criteria for me when I'm offered things that don't come from my heart. Uh, I was actually offered Harry Potter, for instance. Um, um, and, and I thought to myself, can anyone else make this film? And actually, many great people can make Harry Potter. You know, I don't need to make it. But I can make the namesake in a way probably that no one else can make, you know? And that was one of the, that's one of my big sort of keeps me truthful to myself in terms of what I do. So uh, all of you are here, I think dialogue is uh, questions. I mean, that's how I learned, is when I had a filmmaker in front of me, I would just ask the hell out of them in terms of any, any, any things, so uh, anything that you might have in your mind. So let's just open it up to a few questions before I show something else and we can have more. Do you have a clear idea of what your message is going to be or do you let it, do you just discover it along the way? Well, the, not so much the message, which is so, you know, sort of, tied and, and, and packaged, um, but I'm interested, I go into it 
with the question in that case, with the question as who is who decides who is good and who is bad, you know. I mean, life is much more interesting than saying this is. And I wanted to expose, really, in our society, the the complicatedness of that question, you know, uh, as opposed to s starting with the message, okay, I'm going to show you how bad, you know, these women who really have to use their bodies to make a living, I'm going to show you how bad it is. That's what news does. News, do you know, that's what the news, like sort of the evening news can do. But that's not what films, I think, or people like us who are on a journey to ask questions and to create more questions, perhaps, can do, you know. So th I didn't know where, that's the beauty and the challenge and the bloody patience one needs for documentary of that nature, where you don't know where you're going, you know. But you go and you do it and you sit there and you, l everyone thought I was a stripper for four months because I lived with them, you know. My family, they just said I don't exist. That, that year, she said, oh, my mother would say, oh, Mira, I don't know where she is, you know, don't, you know, don't. She, she, they were so upset with me, I can't even tell you. Seriously, you know. And then, then I met the guy, and I wanted to do, I wanted to do the contrasting, the respectable woman against the uh, woman, and, and, you know. But I didn't know how I could do that in an organic way. But then, if you persist, you know, another door will open. And even finding those two dancers took a long time, because people don't want to talk about their lives in that sense. They, and it took me a long, and I wanted to make it lively, interesting, full of questions, humor. My God, how funny are these women? I can't tell you. They would tell body jokes and just amazing jokes about, anyway, maybe I shouldn't, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you can see India Cabaret. Uh, but you know, so I like them as characters, you know, but then this man uh, appeared and then how would I know what his wife was like? I didn't know, you know, and I went with him. And then I lived with the wife. I mean, it's unbelievable that these, and you can do this stuff, you know. And then, it, but it took about eight months, you know, uh, seven, eight months. And in the, in the course of it, you're dying. You don't know what you're doing sometimes. You don't know what you're doing. Then you look at the footage, you do transcripts, you say, OK, she's saying this, but now, uh, you know, where does she come from? And, and life, again, one of the dancers was raising money to pay for the dowry of her sister's wedding. And because she was outside respectability, she probably couldn't marry, she thought. right? So this happened while I was living with them. So then I said, OK, uh, let me come with you to your sister's wedding. You know? And we traveled with the dancer across India to Hyderabad. You know? And we went with her, like you know, literally with her, as she entered her house. And she had the whole money for the sister's wedding. She comes in a little village sort of thing. We went in, we're filming, and she knocks on the door, and the mother comes out. And the mother comes out of the house and sits with the daughter outside the house, because if the daughter were to enter the house, she would pollute the ceremony. Now, did I know this? I didn't know this, you know? And, and I filmed this, and I was amazed, you know? And she took the money. And the daughter sat outside, and she wept. And this is a tough, uh, funny, body, wanting to be sexy girl. This is not, she didn't have shame and all. She was really a great character. But she wept then because she said, this is my life. You know? Now, I didn't know any of that. That's the beauty of making that kind of, you know, film, where you stick with it, you have the patience, you gain their trust. But, and you hope something will happen. You don't know. But I must say, after seven years of doing that sort of thing, I was impatient. I wanted to make things happen myself. You know, I wanted to have the light come through the window like this and have a man's hand open the door, like in the monsoon wedding image. You know, I wanted to do those things. And that's one of the reasons I went into fiction, because I could do those things. But at the same time, not to forget documentary and not to forget life, because life is just extraordinary.